You're listening to Health Nuts with Dr. Chris Cobb. Making lifestyle changes is hard for many people, and not knowing what to do or how to do it makes the task all the more daunting. Here at Health Nuts, we focus on helping you live a fuller life by discussing everyday health issues and exploring breakthrough solutions on how to overcome them. And now, here's your host, Dr. Chris Carr. Welcome back to another episode of Health Nuts. I'm your host, Dr. Chris Carr. And today I've got an awesome guest with us today, Dr. Alex Pattison. Dr. Alex is truly on a mission to change health around the city, specifically around Pittsburgh, PA, where his practice is. He focuses on the five essentials of health, including cutting edge technology and spinal correction that only 3% of other chiropractors practice. Dr. Alex received his undergrad degree at Indiana University of Pennsylvania and continued his education at Palmer College of Chiropractic in Davenport, Iowa. He has trained with the best chiropractors in the world, including going overseas to Vietnam to take the message of chiropractic to other countries. When Dr. Alex is not helping others get well, he is spending time with his family, reading, and traveling with the family. Dr. Alex and his family reside in the the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Dr. Alex, welcome, my friend. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Uh, It's great to have you on. So, you know, one of the things I always like to start with is that's always the formal intro of you. I know you're a local guy like me, but tell us some more about yourself. I'm a young father, two little ones. My wife's pregnant with number three. They're the, uh, the light of my world. And I love what I get to do uh, on a daily basis of taking care of the kids, being a family guy, having the clinic, uh, and getting the message of chiropractic and health and healing out to our community. Yeah. yeah. And you have been, how long have you been in practice? Five years. That's awesome. And you're... Um, one of the kind of ways I came across you, obviously we're in, we're in the same network of docs, but I also, uh, that radio show of yours, how long have you been doing that? Yeah, yeah, we've been doing the radio show for about three years now. It's on 101.5 uh, Word FM Saturday mornings at 11 o'clock, and I love it. It's a great, uh, great avenue for us to, to reach out to Pittsburghers, inspire them to uh, take positive action steps in their life and in their health. Yeah, it, it's just a ton of awesome content. I'm looking forward to having you share some of that content today with the audience. Thank today. You. Today's topic is obviously uh, near and dear to both our hearts. We're going to pretty much hammer chiropractic, the message, what it is, what it does, and and really just talk and and educate those who who really don't know the power of actually what chiropractic is. I'm looking forward to this message and hearing your knowledge uh, and your side of things. But before we get to that, I always like to start this with a powerful affirmation, a quote you've lived by through the years. What would yours be? Uh, you know, I read this one, and, and I think I started saying this in high school, and that was well before I even knew the positive affirmation aspect of success. But uh, it's from Roosevelt, far better to dare mighty things, to win glorious triumphs, even though checkered by failure, than to take rank with those poor fools who neither suffer nor endure too much. That's a powerful one. That's a long time to, uh, obviously, if you're saying it since high school. Yes. It, it must have struck a chord with just, you. Just yesterday, right? Yeah. yeah you just got out. <laughs> So today, so one of the things that we're going we're gonna to talk about a lot is, you know, chiropractic and why most, some might be uninformed, so I'm looking forward to informing those. So the, the basic premise behind chiropractic and what it does, to a layperson out there, how would you explain it? Well, I start this way in my clinic. I ask my practice members before we enter into our doctor-patient relationship what I consider the two most important questions that a physician can ask a patient. And the first is, when it comes to your health, who's ultimately responsible for it? And most people give me the success 101 answer that we're looking for when we ask that question is me. But unfortunately, most Americans don't take that personal responsibility. But once we get our practice members to understand that, listen, we want to be a resource for you. We want to be a guide for you. But you're the healer. You're driving this mission. Uh, Once we get that established, my next question, uh, and this is one that people struggle with quite a bit when I ask it is, if you're going to take personal responsibility for your health, what is health? And I usually get a couple of blank stares, and I literally refuse to say a word Mm -hmm. until somebody starts to say something back Mm -hmm. to me. And it usually is, well, uh, I think I'm healthy. I must be healthy if I feel good. And I'm sure you get that all the time too, right, Doc? Yeah. 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 And, and, and what I like to enlighten people in and what I like to guide people through is that we as an American society have this whole health thing backwards. We need to stop approaching health by how we feel. And this is something that's near and dear to my heart. And this is why I asked this question right off the bat, because the two leading causes of death in the United States, heart disease and cancer, mm-hmm. uh, we don't feel them until it's too late. And my family growing up, 
Uh, my, my mother was diagnosed with cancer in her early 40s. My father had a massive heart attack in his early 50s. And they both felt fine uh, the day he had his heart attack. She felt fine the day that she heard the worst two words on the face of the planet. It's cancer. So one of the things that we like to start off our practice members with is stop determining your health by how you feel and begin to determine your health by really what's important how your body is healing and how your body is functioning. And I think that's where the chiropractic message really hits home and people can begin to empower themselves and take personal responsibility over their health. Yeah, we, we look at the, the message that entails, especially in Western medicine, and we look at the, the number, the two, two major killers of death in the United States, and those are all symptom-based. We know you can have cancer for sometimes eight or nine years before it even shows up on a mammogram. 50 to 60 percent of, of heart attacks or you know the first sign of heart disease can actually be the episode of the heart attack so we know that if we can take symptoms out of it we know health is not how you feel it's also not how you look but it's more so how you function yeah and then, then once we go from there you know we we enlighten our practice members and we have them understand that your body heals and functions via the nervous system mm -hmm. it's the very first organ system that's developed inside of the body in utero my my wife's pregnant with uh, baby number three right now we'll be blessed to have him or her with us in August. And the very first organ that's developed in utero is the brain, the spinal cord, and the nervous system. And that happens for a reason because this is the system that breathes life into the body. And without a brain, without a spinal cord, without a nervous system, we cannot have life. We cannot have health. But when we go to a Western medical doctor and, and we talk to people about health and well being, it's about palliating symptoms, it's about taking medications. When those medications don't work anymore, then we start cutting organ systems out. And how well is that working for us as society? People tend to realize right now in our society that it's not working well. We're the most sickest industrialized nation in the world, yet we spend the most money on healthcare. We take the most drugs. What we're doing as a way of promoting health and healing inside of the body is not working for our society. And as a young father, I want more for my children. I want for more for this next generation. And I just don't see that happening uh, on a massive scale right now. So the, you have this patient who may or may not be expressing the symptoms. So they come from whether a physical and emotional or a chemical stress that they might have endured or a combination of all three throughout their years of existence. What are some examples or some common things you're seeing in the office of common physical uh, distortions or emotional or chemical? Yeah, so, well, for me, my, my favorite person that walks into the clinic is that individual that doesn't have those problems, that wants to protect their body, not end up where my mother and my father did uh, in an emergency room in a dire crisis situation. Thank God for Western Eye Medicine once we get to that point. But what we need to do is understand if we want to get out of that point, we want our body to heal, we need to be looking elsewhere. So my favorite patients are my babies and, you know, these little kiddos that are coming in. Both of my children were adjusted uh, by me. 15 minutes after birth, uh, right after they got their first million kisses, then uh, I put my hands on their spine and I adjusted it because I wanted to ensure that that brain of theirs was communicating with their body instantly from birth, promoting that health and healing that we were put on this planet to uh, express. I think there's two types of people out there. One that believes that the body was created flawed uh, with a ton of problems and requires medicine and surgeries in order to sustain. And then you have, on your other hand, those individuals who believe that we were born uh, and put on this planet for amazing abundant health, and it's our job to protect that. And, and those are the types of people we want to surround ourselves. Now, don't get me wrong. We love meeting those people that are, you know, lost with the headaches, with an autoimmune condition, with a digestive issue, uh, somebody who's in chronic aches and pains, is medicated, uh, coming out of their backside. But, you know, while we love helping those people and we love helping them show them health and healing, to me, the, the real win, the real battle where, where I believe the future of healthcare is going is protecting our health before we've lost it. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. And, and what you were describing was innate intelligence. And we ha all have this inborn innate intelligence to, to heal. Uh, we're not born not able to heal. And as long as we remove the interference, there's no interference that's taking place. The body is more than likely capable of doing just amazing things. And I, I just really love that point. Uh, but to kind of talk further on that, before we get to that point, what can, what can a parent do if they have little ones or if they have kids like you do? What are some things they can do throughout their younger years to keep them healthy? Uh, I, I, I advise most of my parents to stick to things as natural as physically possible. So my children were both breastfed uh, for an entire year. Mm -hmm. uh, we stay away from the formulas. While there's some good ones out there, most are laden with soy and, and lots of different chemicals. Uh, most of the food that my children eat is, 
is cooked by my wife and produced by my brother who has a farm. So we're able and blessed to have all these organic vegetables and things throughout our, throughout our home and throughout our lives. But we, we, we want to focus on and, and understand that, that all of the tools that we need in order to be healthy, in order to be well, have been given to us. And it's our job to protect that. So I would encourage all mothers that are out there listening is, you know, if you're, if you're questioning a food, if you're questioning a concept or a product for your child, ask yourself, is this something that's natural? Um, or is this something that's been produced by man? And if it's the latter, I, I would avoid it. And I would go as much natural as, as physically possible. And, you know, we've been blessed to have two children right now that uh, have been as healthy as possible, two amazing pregnancies. And, you know, we're praying for a third by continuing to follow uh, these protocols that have been successful for us and millions of other parents in the past. Yeah, and those, so you, obviously the, the kids, they grow up different. And sometimes they're not going through uh, a certain uh, what's the word I'm probably looking for, um, issues that, that maybe some parents that go through the, the medical model go through. There's certain decisions you guys just that don't come across your way. But I mean, the two kids you have now, how healthy are they? <laughs> you know, as, as the father, I, I think my, my answer is the healthiest kids on the face of the planet. I'm, I'm sure there's some other kids that are out there that are, that are healthier than them, but we always tend to look at our children special. Uh, my children have never had an ear infection. Uh, they've never... I uh, had a gastrointestinal issue or a sinus problem uh, that a lot of other children have. We've never had uh, the need to, to go to a pediatrician for an antibiotic or a steroid or a lot of the other issues that parents are going for. Because again, we're focusing more on what we can do to maintain health as opposed to combat disease. And I think if that's where our mindset is more as a culture and as a society, we can have more children that are like this. But you and I have seen the research. I've listened to previous shows that you've done. We're just not seeing that. 25% of children right now in grade school and middle school are on a medication that they're going to take for the rest of their lives because parents don't believe or don't understand or have never been educated and told that there is another approach. That while drugs and surgery and all of these things are wonderful, they cannot be our first approach to uh, building health within our youth because you know, it's just not working. This is the first generation on the face of the planet whose life expectancy is shorter than the parents uh, that came before that. We're literally moving backwards. Um, and, and, and if we really, as parents, as if we really as you know, leaders in our society, want to see a generation of kids that, th that, that, that thrive, that don't have the diabetes, the cancer, the heart disease, the digestive issues, and the long and, and painful road to the nursing home that so many have that so many go through we need to be approaching our health in a different way and that's why I love your program that's why I love you and that's why I love people that do what we do because I, I truly believe there's no better way on the planet to making sure that this next generation of kids have have a fighting chance yeah I appreciate those words and I mean those stats just because they you threw so many there but I mean 25 percent of kids are on a drug they're expected to be on the rest of their life the United States, we're taking 70 to 73 percent of all the drugs that are manufactured in the entire world, yet we're making five to six percent of the world's population. So that outside in approach, like you said at the beginning, there's a time and a place for it, but that's the first line of defense more often than not. And you, I mean, you just hit the nail on the head why our country is so darn sick, because it's the, the outside in approach. What chiropractic is, is it's the inside out approach, the above down, inside out. So we, we know what that is, but can you kind of go into more detail what that actually means when we, when we say above, down, inside out? Yeah, it, it literally is as simple as this. These, these were premises was written uh, well over 100 years ago that health comes from above the brain, down the spinal cord, and out through the nervous system. For your heart to be beating right now, for your lungs to breathe, for you to digest your food, for you to understand uh, the words that are coming through your earbuds and your microphone, that's all controlled and all regulated by the brain, by the spinal cord, and the nervous system. So if we want to have a healthy, healthy cardiovascular system, a healthy digestive system, a healthy immune system, we need to be taking care of the system that promotes all of those things. Just think of Christopher Reeve's story, and this is something that I've been using for years in my clinic to help people understand the importance of the nervous system inside of the body. Here's a guy who played Superman uh, in the movies, was the epitome of what a man should look like, fell off his horse one day and broke his neck. Uh, and he was paralyzed from the neck down. And, and we all realize what happened to Christopher Reeves as a result of those injuries. But we don't always realize until we look into his medical records or, you know, we begin to, to research his story a little bit more. They had to put a pacemaker in his heart for his heart to beat, a respirator on his lungs for his lungs to breathe. And they had to have somebody physically push on his bowel so that he could go to the bathroom. But when he fell off that horse and he got hurt, he didn't hurt his heart. He didn't hurt his lungs and he didn't hurt his digestive system. He hurt his nervous system. And as a result of that, all the organ systems inside of his body 
shut down instantly. Right. So if we want to take care of that, we want to prevent uh, all of these chronic degenerative illnesses that were taking place, we need to protect the system that protects us. And that's our nervous system. And that's really what the above down inside out philosophy is all about. You were designed and created to heal. And that takes place through the nervous system. But now you have this, this person out there that, you know, they're getting these warning signs, whether it's a eager, irregular menses, they're um, having a hard time sleeping, they're depressed. So these warning signs, what I know what we know to be is an interference, but somebody who's getting those warning signs, what do you tell them? Thank God for those. Okay. You know, it's, it's hard to say as a physician, I just had a young lady come in the other day. She's like, I got these debilitating migraine headaches. It was like somebody sticking in a needle in my eye three, four, five, six times a week. Uh, can you help me? And the first thing that came out of my mouth is thank God that you had those headaches because otherwise you would not be sitting in that seat. What I want to do today is I want to figure out what's causing that headache because this is a warning system, much like the check engine light in your car that pops on. It's your body's way of telling you that there's a problem. And when we see that check engine light come on in our vehicle, uh, we have two options. We can put a little Band-Aid and a piece of duct tape over that check, check engine light, which so many people do. So many. Or we can begin to approach and, and do you, are you still getting me here? Yeah, you're good. I'm sorry. I, I, I got kicked out. I thought I got kicked out of here uh, no, for a moment. Good. Um, we can either put a you know, piece of duct tape over that check engine light in our vehicle, or we could take it to the mechanic and find out why that check engine light is on and begin to do something about it. Those warning signs, the headaches that you may suffer from, the irregular menstrual cycles, the depression, the digestive issues, these are all a way of your body telling you that there's a problem internally. You can either go to your medical doctor and take a medication and put a big Band-Aid over that warning sign that your body can't feel it anymore, but all the while your body is continuing to degenerate because we never got to the cause. I tell my practice members all the time, the body doesn't need any help healing. It just doesn't need any interference. And our job is to help find those interferences in your body, remove those. And your body's going to do the hard work. Your body's going to do what it is that it needs to do. Your body's going to heal. I think one of the things that uh, parents or that individual patient goes to is they get that symptom and me and you know from being in the field that that body is doing exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. Uh, it's common we get this symptom, whether it's a fever or a headache, we want to get rid of that symptom right away. And we typically, we want that quick fix, but that's not how this is designed. We were never meant to be able to have access to Tylenol at the, at the stroke of our hands. I was reading research uh, the other day saying now if Tylenol were to come out now, you'd actually need a prescription for it. And it's just, just and we know how many people die from these, these side effects of these meds. So I, I loved what you just shared there. Yeah, and, and, and on top of those things, you know, we need to look at the body as this intelligent thing. And, and we get a fever, we vomit, we get diarrhea. Mm -hmm. When the average American has these problems, we run to the druggist or the drugstore and we take a Tylenol. Uh, we take something uh, as an anti nausea to stop us from throwing up or an anti-diuretic to stop mm -hmm. us from you know, having the runs, but we need to ask ourselves the question is, why is this happening to the body in the first place? Well, these are means of the body getting rid of the virus or the bacteria that's making us sick. We vomit it out, we defecate it out, we cough it out, mucus comes out of our nose. If we think that the medicine that's inside of that pill bottle is more intelligent than you know, creation that's put inside of your body, uh, we're, missing, we're, we're missing the point. We're, we're oftentimes making ourselves sicker longer by not allowing these things to come out. So, you know, we encourage mothers and parents and, you know, uh, adults alike when they're experiencing these symptoms, listen to your body. Uh, if it gets completely out of control, get yourself in the emergency room. That's what those places are for. But as an everyday means of life, if you've got a runny nose and we're always taking anti, you know, antihistamine or decongestant or something along those lines, we're simply stopping that intelligence from the body from manifesting and creating a whole host of problems that's going to stick with us for, for a very, very long time. Yeah, the analogy that kind of comes to my head right now is that we brought Peter to pay Paul. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So the, one of the things I'd love to take away with this podcast are, are three health nuggets that the audience can take right away, something they can implement. What are three things that you love to share with your patients? Yeah, we, sleeping is hugely important. And this all comes back to the chiropractic message. You know, a lot of us know that we need to be sleeping. But uh, when we go to bed at night, every system in our body slows down, our cardiovascular system, our digestive system, our immune system, uh, our pulmonary system, these all slow down when we go to bed at night. The only system that speeds up is our nervous system, because this is the system that's healing our body. So we need to be sleeping in order for our body to be healing. Uh, you know, we, we need to I would say that would be number one. Uh, number two is the average person wants to look for the easy fix. They want to grab 
uh, a nutritional supplement, uh, which I'm big on. And, you know, I take a ton myself and, and we have those in the clinic, but all the nutritional supplements in the world are going to do you diddly squat if you're driving through the drive through uh, every single day at lunchtime. So we want to we want to focus more on these natural things, eating well, putting good nutrients inside of our body and then supplementing a life, a healthy lifestyle with supplements as opposed to trying to use supplements as a replacement mm -hmm. for a healthy lifestyle. And number three, uh, find yourself a corrective care chiropractor, somebody that's going to structurally look at your body in a way of finding these neurological interferences, a subluxation. Uh, through advanced imaging, through testing, through orthopedic uh, evaluation, through ranges of motion, be able to pinpoint right where that's at, find these interferences, and then have somebody that's able to remove those from the body to allow the brain to communicate with the parts to express maximum health. Those would be my, my three health three. And topics. And people aren't going to be happy with me because it's not like, oh, I, I take this multivitamin and all my problems are going to be fixed, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the supplements, and I get that a ton, and I, I appreciate that because the supplements, it's not a prescription for you to keep on living a terrible life yeah. because you're taking a high-quality uh, protein supplement or a high-quality fish oil. So it, you hit the nail on the head. It's not a replacement. It, it's in supplement to something healthy you're already doing. <clears throat> what was your recommendation for – so sleep, how many hours are you telling your patients? Uh, we should be looking for anywhere between eight and 10. Um, and one of the things I recommend for my patients is a nap. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of a 20 minute nap midday. Uh, it's easy for me to do because I'm up at five o'clock in the morning. I'm usually putting the kids to bed and putting myself to bed around uh, maybe uh, 10, 30, 10 o'clock at night. So for me, it's really important to find that nap midday in order to rest. But the eight to 10 hours, like you've been told most of your life is, is kind of right where we need to be and where, where I, where I try to get my practice members to uh, find that little uh, nest egg there. Yeah, you got to stick with it. So now you get to, I always love this question, because now you get to go back to the future. So if you could go back in time, knowing what you know now, having the life and practice, ex practice experiences that you have, what would you tell your younger self? <laughs> That's why I'm growing the beard, because all my yeah. practice members think I'm so young. So I figured I'd grow this big manly beard and have them think I'm a little bit older than I really am. You look very sophisticated. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, Dr. Chris, growing up, I, I was raised the, the, the way that the average American was raised is heart disease and cancer, diabetes, all of these issues that your family members are going to have are going to happen to you. So um, just eat what you want, do what you want, live your life the way that you want, because uh, it's going to happen to you anyways. Um, and that's pretty easy to, to, to take in when you're 16, 17, 18 years old and you're invincible um, until you see the hell that people go through uh, with a cancer diagnosis and uh, having a massive heart attack. And, and I can remember uh, sitting on my father's hospital bed the night of him, him having his heart attack um, and, and having this thought in my head is, no, that can't be me. That can't be my wife. That can't be my son. Uh, I wish to God that, that I would have lived my life like, like my ch children are going to have the opportunity to live since day one of birth of understanding that their body is amazing. It's wonderful that they're healers that they can overcome. Uh, but me, probably like most of the listeners right now, mm -hmm. We didn't get off to that great head start that mm -hmm. our children are going to have the blessing to do. So the sooner we can begin to realize um, that this body is, is our temple, it's our opportunity to do good on this planet, and the healthier it is, the easier that is to fulfill. Um, I think the, the, the more good and the more health we're going to see in this world. Yeah, I, I think we have a very similar backgrounds, and I have a very similar story uh, with my father as well. And I think if I were to get asked that same question, that's probably the exact same answer that, that I would give. So it's an awesome share. Why well, are such a smart guy? <laughs> yeah. Is that what we call it? <laughs> so now I'm going to pepper you, pepper you with some questions, and then we'll, uh, we'll be all done. All right. Best advice you ever got? Ah, uh, boy. I guess I've, I've had the blessing of having so many good mentors in my life, but um, I, I wasn't raised like so many other millennials like myself was, is uh, go participate and whatever happens, happens, and you'll get the ribbon and the reward afterwards. Uh, my parents always pushed me for my best, um, and I guess the best advice I ever had was wherever, wherever your mind is at, uh, put your heart there as well, and, and just go after it 100% because... Uh, you know, you're not going to look back in life uh, on your deathbed and say, yeah, I wish I would have won a little bit less uh, hard uh, in, my, in my life, with my family, with my relationships, with my finances, with my business, uh, with my health. Um, you know, this, this society rewards people that, that go all for it. And I think there's a reason for that. Yeah. Taking action beats thinking about it any yeah. day of the week. Yeah. 
uh, one of the what's a, one of the resources you're reading right now or sending your patients on to, whether it's a, a uh, boy. A book. I, uh, I, I've been telling my practice members for as long time as, you know, I went to college for seven and a half years um, and I've learned more from uh, my self studies than I have in, in any type of formal education. So I'm always reading. Um, and right now I'm reading two books. I'm usually reading two or three at any given time. Uh, one, I had lunch with a guy, he's from Pittsburgh as well. Awesome guy. His intelligence is way higher than mine. He wrote a book called uh, The Environmental and um, Genetic Causes of Autism, Dr. James Lyons. He's, he's awesome. Uh, great guy. Uh, yeah, he's a great, so you yeah. know him as well. Yeah. Yes, I've heard him speak uh, I, multiple times. He's a fantastic guy. I would, I would encourage anybody who has a child that is suffering with that problem uh, or is concerned of, you know, that problem to read that book. I think it's a ton of great resources. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading right now um, something completely off topic from health or personal growth. Um, Atlas Shrugged by Anne Rain. I, I, I'm always, I'm always reading something, always trying to broaden, broaden my horizon. So uh, get yourself to the library, get yourself on Amazon Prime <laughs> in, the, in the new world and, and have a book delivered to your house on a weekly basis. I love it. So now we have, we have a struggling person out there. They're having a hard time losing weight, getting their health back, kind of just getting through their day-to-day -day life. What's the best thing they can do? Man, find me or you. I, uh, and, and that may sound like a shameless plug, but I, I've had the pleasure of getting to know you. Um, and our heart right now is just for, for Pittsburghers that are struggling. Uh, we're experts um, in nutrition and exercise and detox and mindset, mm -hmm. obviously chiropractic. If we can put all five of those things in one package in an individual, um, I really believe that we have the opportunity to change lives. And I can say that uh, with the utmost confidence because, um, you know, I watched this happen to not only my practice members, not only to me and my wife, uh, but to uh, my mother and my father. Uh, they're amazing grandparents to my children right now. Um, and I will be completely honest, there was times um, that I didn't think that not only they were going to be amazing grandparents, but that my children weren't going to have grandparents. Things, things were tough. Uh, but when an individual puts their head down and, and begins to relentlessly pursue their health, um, you know, amazing things happen. And I've had the blessings uh, in order to see that with the two most important people, two of the very important <laughs> people in my lives, my, my mother and, and my father. Yeah, I mean, it's so awesome with the, the kids and, and with another one on the way. I mean, what a blessing to have them around and, and see them grow up. So we have the, uh, the audience out there. They need to find you. How can they find you? Man, uh, typical young uh, entrepreneur. I'm, I'm all over the place. Mm. I would encourage people to uh, check out my Facebook page, Dr. Alex Patterson. Uh, I have a YouTube channel with tons of great information and video clips, uh, Dr. Alex Patterson on YouTube. Uh, you can tune in to 101.5 Word FM every Saturday morning at 11 o'clock or check out my website if you'd like to schedule an appointment, get to know us a little bit more, www.maximizelivingdrpatterson.com. Yeah, for, for the audience out there, his, his radio show is unbelievable. He's got a ton of content on his YouTube. I'm on there and, and I learn stuff from it as well. So, um, yeah, it's words of wisdom and, and I really love the message you shared today, Dr. Alex. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. I appreciate it. God bless. And you as well. I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Yeah. So you've heard from the experts yourself this episode and have gotten some golden nuggets on health. There is so much more to come and so much more to learn. Head on over to pghcw.com. Again, that's pghcw.com. And sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive free info on how to get and stay healthy. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on Health Nuts with Dr. Chris Carr. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast and please leave a review.